Even by today's standards, the 1978 version of Superman is an entertaining, fun blockbuster. It strikes an almost perfect balance of tone and relaunched at least three iconic characters in forms that still haven't been bettered. Superman 2013, or Man of Steel, is fine. It chugs through two hours divertingly enough before ending with half an hourish of painfully boring smashing of stuff. I'd forgotten most of it before I left the cinema. Comparing these films is a series of videos in itself, so in this video, I want to concentrate on the difference between two versions of one character, Lois Lane. Why this character? Because Lois 78 is a rounded, engaging character. Lois 2013 is barely a character at all. Now it's not totally fair to compare these characters in isolation. Man of Steel crams in a lot of plot and doesn't have a lot of time for Lois, while Superman 78 devotes a lot more time to Lois's character and developing the relationship between her and Clark slash Superman. But even within that, Man of Steel does a poor job of Lois, so let's compare them anyway. There'll be spoilers for both films. The best proof of how great a character Lois 78 is, is when she dies. Because on paper, this scene is terrible. It's set up in a lazy, contrived way. She's out west looking into a land fraud deal. Really? She just happens to be out there on the fault line investigating Lex Luthor's land deal? And the idea of killing the love interest and having Superman bring her back, and in a way that makes no sense, is eye-rolling pandering to the audience. But it works, and it works really well, because by that point, it's easy to believe Superman is in love with Lois, and as an audience, we don't want her to die. How the film builds this up is really impressive. When we meet Lois, the film does a great job of showing us who she is. She's single-minded. Lois Lane, say hello to Clark Kent. Told you one thing. Lois Lane, how are you? She's ambitious. But this could be the basis for a whole series of articles, making sense of senseless killings by Lois Lane. And irreverent. Perhaps you could arrange for half my salary to be, to be sent to this address on a weekly basis. You're bookie, right? A what? Don't tell me. He sends a check every week to his sweet grey-haired old mother. But she's also fame-seeking. The way I see it, it's a banner headline, front page, maybe my picture. There's only one P in rape. And her stories are kind of sleazy. Lois, you're pushing a bunch of rinky dink tabloid garbage. <laughs> Which are, you know, the kind of imperfect contradictions an actual person might have. And the film is confident in her as a character, without having to make announcements that she's great. I'm a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter. She's happy to argue with her editor. So I'm giving far. him the city beat. <laughs> Chief, that's my beat. And even Superman. Uh, you really shouldn't smoke, you know, Miss Lane. Don't tell me lung cancer, right? But she's nervous around Superman. She wants him to like her, and she embarrasses herself. Why are you? I'm sorry. I mean, uh, why are you here? Which again is the way an actual person might act around someone they have a thing for. She's a great character. But like the film itself, she's not perfect, and some aspects have aged badly. Her inner monologue in particular is cringeworthy. You can fly. You belong in the sky. You and I could belong to each other. A 2013 film needs to update the character, but the way it does, well, what really annoys me about this character is that if you were to write down a bullet point comparison of each character's personality, Lois 2013 beats Lois 78 in the screenwriting book rules of a good character. Lois 78 doesn't do anything to advance the story. Her journalism is kind of sleazy. She falls in love with Superman the way a 12 year old girl falls in love with a pop star. If you need to be loved, here I am. And by a massive coincidence, she's in the right place so Superman can save her at the end. Lois 13, on the other hand, is a... About, I'm a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter. ...doing serious journalism. And those pieces you wrote when you were embedded with the first division were... Well, they were pretty impressive. She's active in the story... ...and plays an essential part in the ending. ...before also being saved by Superman. Except all of these things have the weight of the screenwriter's napkin they were scribbled on the back of. She tells us she's a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist. About, I'm a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter. Someone else tells us she was a great combat journalist. And those pieces you wrote when you were embedded with the first division. And in place of dialogue that might be an insight into who she is, 
The script gives her tough guy cliches to spit out. So if we're done measuring dicks, can you have your people show me what you found? All of this adds up to her being less a person than a little cog that helps the film run. She goes against her editor's wishes to put out a story she's written. Hey, Perry's gunning for you. He knows your Woodburn's anonymous source and he cannot wait to rip you a new one. But it never seems like this is a difficult choice for her to make. Because, you know, screwing over an employer you respect and potentially ruining a career is no big deal. Nor does it feel like there are any real consequences when she does it. So whatever your reasons are for dropping it, I think you're doing the right thing. Equally, finding out who Superman is... I figured if I turned over enough stones, you'd eventually find me. But choosing not to reveal it has no weight to it. As a journalist, you have the story of the century and you're not going to use it? I can understand that as a choice. But again, it doesn't feel like it's even a difficult choice for her. You know, the kind of difficult decision that might make the audience care about her. Now maybe you're saying, come on Declan, this ain't a documentary about journalism, it's a superhero movie. But the point is, like in most films, it's hard to care about the plot if we don't care about the characters. So if the character isn't interesting or unique, or we don't get a reason to empathise with their struggles, it's hard to care about what happens when the smashing and explosions start. What if? Her stories took ages to investigate, and were expensive, and not many people read them, so she didn't get paid much. Tracking down Superman would be a big career boost for her, so not revealing his identity, or going against her editor's wishes, would actually be a sacrifice for her, and we might give a shit. Or something like that. I know it's easier to throw out ideas than to actually write those ideas and make them work. And I'm not going to say what makes a good character, because there are characters that hook our attention for so many reasons. But I think if there's anything that unites them, it's that the time was taken to let us see who they were outside their function in the plot, even if just a little. So you've got an iconic character, you've got a great actress to play her, why not take even a bit of time to make her more than a cog in the plot? Thanks for watching. I decided to tackle this subject because I thought, do you know what the world needs? Another opinion about superhero movies on the internet. You're welcome.